Hi, it's Col here again with a, another video. Last time I tried to explain to you how I see the world differently. I told you that people were spiritual beings. I drew a nice picture for you. So if I can find it. Okay, so it was looking like that. I told you that people were spiritual beings first. They exist before you're born. They join up with the baby's body at birth and they move on having accumulated all the experiences when you die. Uh, I told you there were these three basic areas, your physical body, emotional body and your mental body. Okay, I would like to move on a bit from there. I mean, remember I also told you how trauma affects people. So trauma will be like hitting this thing with a hammer boom, and it will shatter all these things. That's how I will see it as disrupted energy patterns. But the person who suffered the trauma, they will get changed memories, changed feelings, changed thinking processes, changed behaviours, changed everything. Also remember that I told you I don't go with this victim stuff and I don't go with the angry Avenger stuff. So whatever happens, you've got to work on it. I'll explain a lot more about that later in this video. And I also told you a bit about how I do the spiritual healing. Okay, this video, we're going to expand on that basic model, take it a couple of steps further, and I'll explain lots more. Okay. Now, can you see this one? That'll get it on the screen for you. No, that's not very good. Okay, that's a little bit better. So we have, okay, so there's our basic little stick man and the two energy bodies. So his mental body and emotional body. And here we have, this is your little soul that comes along and hooks up at birth and of course there's lots of problems for people around about that stage there are couples mums who are desperate to get pregnant and who can't there are those who get pregnant when they don't want to be there are those who have very difficult births or difficult kids or it really screws up their lives um, okay but there's some of the things that we deal with and eventually we'll make sort of future videos on those things. So here you are in your body, living a life. This is pretty much how most people function. They will think about something. They will have feelings about it. They will put it into some kind of action. Their little social circle or society um, this is where they interact with others and get their feedback. And of course, this goes as a bit of a loop. You know, you're probably doing it back to front. And you do it all again. So that's pretty much what happens in life, how you think about it, you feel about it, you do it, you get a result, you change and you keep going. Now, this bit up the top is sort of new to you. This is how I see people's connection to God. Now, trying to discuss God in 30 seconds is a bit impossible, but I can break it down to two basic bits for you. If you're thinking universal, absolute God, you know, the guy that creates and runs the whole universe, I can vaguely conceive of a great big glob of consciousness and energy patterns but it is really way beyond anything my little brain can comprehend. What I can comprehend and what I can experience directly is within everybody, there is like a little spark of God. Now, you might call it um, the God within you, which is probably a pretty good name. Your higher self is another name for it. I know it's there. I talk to mine all the time and it works through me to do some healings on people like you. Most people don't even recognize that it's there. A few people recognize it, but it's only a little tiny influence in the background. 
And a few people like me get all maniac about it and spend hours per day meditating to stay in strong contact with it. But it's there. I mean, ultimately, I'll do some videos on how to establish and develop that contact. Now, over whoop, this side, okay, you've had your life, you die, and you move back out to spirit land and your body disappears. People have lots of fun at that stage of life too, because some people don't know how to die, and dying's not easy for them, and a lot of their relatives don't want to let them go, and it can all get pretty emotionally messy when it really is a very basic natural process. So eventually we'll get to a video on dying and death as well, but that'll take us a while. What I want to focus on now is a bit more about these things here. Mental, emotional, physical, social. Because you can use them as sort of like stepping stones in a, uh, a little model for personal development. You need to be functioning well at all of those different levels to have a good, happy, well-functioning, useful life. Okay, so that's the part I want to focus on for the next bit of this video. Okay, so here's my model. You've just seen the little pictures of how I see it in here. I'll try and talk you through it better. Uh, perfect world, everybody would have a, a clear, conscious connection to God. So in here, you'd be able to listen, you'd be able to ask, you'd get answers. Uh, I know this sounds crazy to most of you, Personally, I think that God talks to everybody all the time, just that most people don't listen. So it's a case of learning to listen, not a case of God isn't there. But ideally, you would have that. You would get the guidance, the help, the whatever you needed for whatever's going on in your life. It makes life flow so much easier. There's a very good argument, which I believe, that says all of your problems in this life start when you lose that sense of a conscious connection to God. And by definition, the solution to all your problems starts when you re-establish that connection. Now, I know that's a big ask and it is physically impossible for like 99 people out of 100, maybe 999 out of 1000, to sit down and meditate just because I said it's good for you. Most people just can't do it uh, and not very many people at all can sort of come at it straight away off their own bat. Okay, put that there as a big goal for the future. You can crack that bit, you win the jackpot. All right, a more humanistic sort of model. You have a clear head. You, you can think straight in there. You've got good focus, good concentration. Your memories are all nice and neatly stored somewhere at the back. They're accessible, you can dig them up when you want to, you can file them back when you want to. You can make sensible choices, you can line up your options, you can pick one, make a decision, and you've got the concentration and the focus to stick with it. So if you've got a mind like that, that's good. Perfect, that's what you want. Your emotions, they should be calm, stable, not easily agitated or excited, Basically, you're a happy, contented kind of person pretty much all the time. Okay, okay, that's good. That's what you want. Now, your physical body. You want to be healthy, well, healthy enough and fit, fit enough to lead a good life so you don't have to worry about your body falling apart on you. You've got to be well nourished. You don't want to be poisoned. You don't want to have a whole pile of... Uh, not only toxins, but parasites or other things. You don't want to be having accidents and breaking stuff. Um, you've got to be active enough, mobile enough, so you can get out and lead a normally busy, active, happy life. If you've got to spend all your time thinking about your life, I um, mean, your physical life and your physical body, so that it's just too much trouble to do anything, that's not good. Okay, that's not good. Uh, socially, you you normally, people would want family, um, friends, maybe work colleagues. Basically, you need someone that you can love and someone you feel loves you. 
it's also very good if you can feel like you're a useful contributing member to your little community, to your society. Okay, you've got all those and you're having a good life. Everything's sweet. Except most people can't get all of these things functioning nicely all at the same time. So when you get deviations from those things or excessive focus on one and ignoring the others, that's when you start getting some problems. Now, my job as a healer, well, a couple of angles, but I have to help you to understand life's processes. So if you can understand that model that I just drew and tried to explain, and you can see where you are, you understand how life is working or not working for you, uh, and you can make a few changes in how you think about it and how you approach life. That's fantastic, okay? You've got to know what's going on and you've got to choose properly. I can help make repairs at whatever the appropriate level is. So I can plug into God, I can rechange the energy patterns, I can teach you different ways of thinking, and there's plenty of different tricks from hypnotherapy, NLP, counselling, wherever, um, that you can use to help change your thinking to make it a bit more practical, a bit more useful for you. Um, emotionally, yeah, I can certainly calm you down. I can maybe teach you a few tricks to be happy, but a lot of it is actually what you focused on. So personally, I spent a lot of my life looking at things and I automatically look at the funny side of them. So I'm always happy and always laughing. It gets me into trouble a lot of the time because people don't quite know what I'm up to. But, you know, I, I can usually get out of it. Um, physically, Again, I learned lots of natural therapies, uh, nutrition, those sorts of things, um, dietary stuff, exercise stuff, simple body therapies. There's heaps of things that are simple, natural, reasonably cheap and easy to do, and no almost zero sort of level danger. Most people would go to a doctor if you've got a serious illness type thing, they just had a big accident. It's probably the right place to be. Uh, from what I've seen there, if you're looking for lifestyle advice on how to manage your life better, you're probably not going to get that in your five to ten minutes sitting in a doctor's surgery while they're busy writing a prescription for a drug. So you've got to learn where to go for what kind of advice that you need. So my job as a healer, help you to understand it, help you make repairs at the appropriate level, and try to restore you to that happy, competent, functioning being again. Well, good. All right, now I'd like to talk a little bit about karma. That's right, K-A-R-M-A, -A. karma. Everybody's heard of it. Everybody thinks they know something about it. If you ask people what they understand, you'll get basic ideas. So some people will say, oh, if I do bad, I get punished. That's my bad karma. Uh, a few smarter people will say, yeah, but if I do good, I get rewarded. That's my good karma. Okay, it's simplistic, but it's a start. Maybe you'll find people will say, ah, you reap what you sow. Or they will say, you have an action, you get a result. Again, they're right, but there is more to it. There's always more to these things. Uh, for karma, this is one of the basic fundamental laws that our whole physical universe runs on. So it's much bigger, it is much more important than you have ever probably thought. Okay, let's have a focus a bit on it, see what goes on. I would like a better definition. So it's not just good, bad stuff. It is like what I cause someone else to experience, I will also experience. Do you like that? If I cause them pain, I will experience pain. I help them to make money, I will make money. I help them to feel happy in their relationship, I will feel happy in my relationship. It, it works just about every which way you can think of. What you're putting out and causing others to experience, you will bounce back an appropriate version of that to experience it in your life. Now, when you think that applies to everything that you think, feel, do, 
this karma thing becomes a pretty scary kind of a threat. It starts with what you desire, you know, what you want to experience. You keep thinking about it, you keep planning how to get it and experience it, you keep scheming, whatever, you start putting that into action. Uh, eventually, you will manage to either create it or attract it into your life somehow, but it will be there and you will experience it. Okay, you think, tick, that's one more desire that I've managed to work off or experience at least, and you think that's good. Now, maybe it is, but most, maybe every action comes with a, a package deal kind of result. You might get the one you're after, but might not. And you almost certainly get extra consequences, like a package deal. It's not just one little bit. You get all the things that come with it. Side effects, if you like. Consequences you didn't see coming, didn't anticipate. And when they turn up, you don't like it. Now, according to the Buddha, and he's probably the expert on this karma, and I certainly believe him, he says, it's these desires we, and your pursuit of them, pardon me, that keep you coming back to all these different earthly lives. And of course, it's the results of you chasing these desires and creating effects that create all the different conditions in your life, the good ones and the bad ones. I'd add a little personal development thing in there as well, but hopefully you're sort of learning, developing as you, you go. Um, but bottom line for that is there are no accidents. Everything in your life is there for a reason. And according to the Buddha, this is your past karma catching up with you. One of the Buddha's really good sayings that I liked was he said, your karma will follow you as surely as the wheel ruts that your cart makes on a dirt road follow the cart it will find you, you know, and it will find only you, and it will definitely be yours. And I can sort of see that in my head very, very clearly. And I'm thinking, hmm, yeah, okay. Now, what can you do about it? Well, the Buddha says lots of things, but fundamentally, you got three kinds of karma. There is the past karma, and he likens this to uh, an arrow that you shoot, but which it hasn't hit its target yet. And of course, maybe in our Australian language, uh, boomerang would be better. I've, I've chucked a boomerang, but it hasn't, hasn't come back to hit me in the back of the head yet. Um, okay, that's your past karma. It will eventually catch up with you. All of the things that happen in your life, which looks like good, bad, happy accidents, um, they're actually your karma catching up with you. So if you're one of these people that say, look, I try to lead a good life, I'm an innocent victim and all this bad stuff happens to me, the Buddha would say, that's your past karma. And effectively, he'd then say, deal with it. You'd nod in parlance, he might say, suck it up, get on with it. And you don't really have a choice. When, when all these bad things seem to happen, there's no point going back to sort of pull your life or your previous lives apart. You just got to deal with it. Now, you can call it your karma if you like, you can call it an accident if you like, but you still have to deal with it. I like the karma version, makes sense to me. There is present karma, cash karma, instant karma. You head about the wall, you get a sore head. You, know, you start a fight and the other guy punches back, you both get sore heads. Okay, whatever you're doing, there's like an instant result. The third one, and this is probably the most important one, that's the future karma, because whatever you are doing right now, this is what is creating the, the good, the bad circumstances for you a little bit further down the track, or maybe a lot further down the track. And don't think you can avoid them by dying or something else, because they accumulate and they'll catch up with you somewhere in the future. So you've got to think very carefully about what you were doing right here, right now. Okay, now you know the spiritual reasons behind what, why I said before. Uh, 
I don't go with the poor victim thing. Deal with it. Suck it up. Do what you can to overcome whatever problem you've got. No point whinging. Doesn't help anybody, at least not you. You also know why I would say I don't go with the angry avenger thing either. If you get angry, there are instant bad results for you. If you go getting vengeful, you do something nasty to other people, you keep this whole bad karmic cycle thing going. You do something bad to them, bad things will come back to you. And it just keeps going. It'll create more future problems. So no victims, no angry avengers, whatever happens, deal with it as calmly, reasonably, sensibly as you possibly can. You learn what you can from it and you move on. Okay? You drop the problem, deal with it, keep going. That's life. If there's such a thing as a bottom line from all this karma stuff and this personal development stuff and the nice little pictures I drew for you early, you should be aiming to be calm, happy, reasonable, considerate kind of person all the time. Okay, It's good for you. It's good for people around you, which bounces back and is good for you. And if you want to translate that into my simple language, I would say, heck, now that I know whatever I do to someone else bounces back to me, I'll give everybody that I meet a big smile, a hug if it's appropriate, and 50 bucks if need be, um, because I know it'll come back to me. Okay. You might want to think about that until next time. Okay. Bye for now. See you with another video shortly.